Hey y'all, welcome. Today is National Bagel Day. Y'all know I love celebrating national days, so of course I had to make some bagels today. These bagels are not only delicious, they are so easy. You only need two ingredients to make the bagel dough. Yep, you heard that right. <laughs> Let's get into it. First things first, preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. Now get out self-rising flour and plain non-fat Greek yogurt. Those are the only two ingredients you need to make the bagel dough. The dough is a one-to-one -one ratio of self-rising flour to yogurt. If you want to make four bagels, mix one cup of self-rising flour with one cup of Greek yogurt. I wanted to make eight different types of bagels, so I doubled it which means I mixed two cups of self-rising flour with two cups of plain non-fat Greek yogurt. You can of course just mix the dough with a spoon, but my grandmama gave me this fancy Danish whisk for mixing doughs. It works so well. There is something magical about this whisk that makes mixing doughs 10 times easier. Obviously, I had to use it to make this bagel dough. After the dough is mixed, you have to knead the dough for a little bit. At first, I prepared parchment paper by sprinkling some all-purpose flour on it. However, it turned out to be much easier to knead the dough in the bowl. So I plopped the dough back in the bowl to knead it. Just knead it until it is not sticky. I'm not sure if I knead correctly. I just press on it and mix it with my hands. Now the dough is ready to be made into bagels. First, prepare the pan. I spread parchment paper on a baking tray and sprayed some oil onto the paper. Next, I divided the dough into four eyeballed sections, then divided those four sections in two to create eight different sections, which will make eight bagels. I used a plate as the surface that the dough would be rolled out on. You could also use a baking mat, parchment paper, or a tray. I rolled it out to make a long snake, then I folded the edges to meet and pressed the edges together to seal them. Just work with the dough until you get the shape you want. Next, place it on the pan and continue making the bagels. The Bible verse I want to talk about today while we are making these bagels is 2 Samuel 7:22. How great you are, sovereign Lord. There is no one like you and there is no God but you, as we have heard with our own ears. The Lord is great. He has blessed us with so many things in life beyond what we can even imagine. Not only is he just great as in awesome, he is also great and powerful. He has the power to perform miracles and change lives. There is no one like him and he is the only God. He is our Lord and trust in him today. I wanted to try out eight different flavors to give y'all options when y'all make these bagels and to give y'all my opinion on which flavor is the best. Two of the flavors I tried required me to mix add-ins into the dough before shaping the bagel. First, I wanted to try a chocolate chip bagel. I poured many semi-sweet chocolate chips into the dough and mixed it with my hands before I shaped the bagel. The second flavor I tried was a cinnamon raisin bagel. I mixed raisins into the dough before shaping the bagel. Like I said, it was supposed to be a cinnamon raisin bagel, but I forgot to add the cinnamon later. Therefore, it was just a raisin bagel. <laughs> For the rest of the flavors, I used a brush and some water to add a little bit of liquid to the top of the dough so the toppings would stick. I left one bagel plain because I had to try a plain bagel. For the next bagel, I added sesame seeds to the top. Everything but the bagel seasoning was added to the next one. If you didn't know, this seasoning consists of poppy seeds, sesame seeds, dried garlic, dried onion, and salt. I added cinnamon sugar to another bagel. Now, cheese bagels. I tested shredded sharp cheddar cheese on one bagel and a slice of sharp cheddar cheese on another. Now 
these bad boys are topped and ready to be popped in the oven. Bake them for 25 minutes. When they come out of the oven, do not be alarmed at their color. These bagels are extremely light and that is normal. The inside is cooked, I promise, and the bottom has browned. If you want the top to brown, you are welcome to broil them for a minute or so. However, I like them just the way they are. Now it is time to taste. I'll do the, the slice of cheese. First, I went for the cheese bagel. This was the bagel with the slice of sharp cheddar cheese. I'm gonna eat one of those every day. It's good. I didn't add salt, but I feel like adding salt in that would make it better. This bagel would have been even better with a sprinkle of salt. The crispiness of the cheese on top of this bagel made it super tasty. I guess I should have started with a plain one. Yep, I should have started with the plain bagel. Now I will try that one. It has like a buttermilk taste because of the Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. Salt would be good. This plain bagel was yummy and would have been even better with some salt. And then I put sesame seeds on another one. I don't think they have it. Oh, they do have a taste. Oh, they do have a taste. Mm -hmm. It was almost an earthy flavor. If you like Asian cuisine and sesame seed oil, you will definitely like this bagel. Next, I tried the bagel with the everything but the bagel seasoning on it. Remember, that seasoning is made with poppy seeds, sesame seeds, salt, dried garlic, and dried onion. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I'm sure you like that. That's good. I really enjoyed this bagel because the flavors were so powerful. This bagel was better than a store-bought everything bagel that we got at the grocery store earlier. Okay, maybe the shredded cheese one. I mean, it's not as cheesy. The bagel with the shredded sharp cheddar cheese on it had the same flavor as the slice of cheese, but it was less cheesy because there was less cheese on this bagel. I would suggest making the bagels with slices of cheese because if you want cheese, you need to make sure there is a lot of cheese on the bagel. Don't go halfway with the shredded cheese. Use a slice. We have the sweet ones left. So Under the raisin one. one. Okay. This should have cinnamon sugar on it, but it doesn't. Next, we tried my cinnamon raisin minus the cinnamon bagel. I like the texture mm -hmm. of the raisin in it. The raisins added an extra texture to the bagel that was enjoyable. Also, the sweetness of the raisin was a great contrast to the slight sourness of the bagel. Cinnamon sugar. Oh my goodness, that's so good. I was a little excited about this one, apparently. The cinnamon sugar was so yummy on top of the bagel. Sweet, a little sour, and a little spicy. Might sound weird, but it's actually really good. I'm gonna grab a raisin. Yeah, Stick it, it on the cinnamon raisin. I like it. I like it a lot. Yes, this is what the cinnamon raisin bagel was supposed to taste like. I highly suggest making a cinnamon raisin bagel. Just pick it chocolate. easily and mix it. Just chocolate. I mean, I like it. It's not my favorite. I'd rather just eat chocolate. This bagel was okay. It tasted good because chocolate is tasty by itself. I don't think it added anything to the bagel though. I would suggest you not add the chocolate chips into the bagel. Just eat them separately. So mm. what's your favorite? I like the everything but the bagel seasoning and probably the cinnamon. I thought the cheese one was I pretty really good too. like the cheese one. I think my other favorite would be to pick a raisin out and yeah. with that and make a cinnamon a raisin. A cinnamon raisin. There is the verdict, folks. The top three bagel flavors are as follows. Everything but the bagel seasoning, cinnamon raisin, and cheese. Thank y'all for watching. Make sure you try these bagels and celebrate National Bagel Day. Don't forget that you are welcome to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Be a blessing to others today. Bye guys.